stay up past your bedtime, shall we? You're probably gonna need this. G'day guys, welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna dive into astrophotography. In this video, we're gonna cover all the basics of astrophotography so that you can get images like this. We're gonna run through what equipment you use, where to shoot, and how to shoot those images. And right at the end, I've got another link that will take you to my astrophotography editing tutorial. So you can take those images you shoot tonight and edit them later. So let's start off with gear. First thing you need, obviously, is a camera. Now the lens you need, ideally, would be as wide as possible and as fast as possible. And what I mean by fast is being able to let as much light in as possible. So you want your aperture to be 2.8 or something a little bit lower. It's my old film camera, but it's the easiest way to describe what aperture is. So aperture is the iris inside your camera. And the wider it is, the more light it lets into your camera. Now, you don't need the newest, latest model. Yes, this is the newest, latest model. But the images I showed you at the start of this video were all shot on the old Canon 6D. I'm pretty sure you can pick those up for like four to $500 now. A secondhand lens, maybe 700 US. The third thing that's an absolute must is a sturdy tripod. You don't want the camera moving at all while you're doing long exposures, otherwise your images will just end up blurry. Two other optional things. One is a red flashlight. Red light doesn't affect your eyes in the dark, so you wanna be able to let your eyes adjust to the darkness, and red light allows them to do so. One last thing, if you need it, you can get a remote shutter, otherwise you just use the two second timer so that you don't wobble the camera at all. That's literally all the things you need to shoot astrophotography. Now, the next thing to think about when shooting astrophotography is to scout your location, to figure out where you're gonna go, because if you go out at night, you're not really gonna have any idea what you're looking at. But if you go and scout an area during the day, you might be able to figure out a composition or something that you are interest, interested in photographing of a nighttime. And it just makes the actual process of shooting at night so much easier. Now another thing to think about is the light pollution that might be in and around that area that you're thinking of shooting. There's a couple of websites, I'll list them in the links below, that will show you where the darkest parts of the sky is. But the general rule of thumb, just get away from city lights, out in the wilderness, somewhere dark, and you should be sweet. The third thing to think about is the actual visibility of the Milky Way. Now there's different times of year where the Milky Way is visible at certain times, as opposed to it's not at certain times of the year. In North America, astrophotography season is from about July to, I'm gonna say November, where you can actually see the core of the Milky Way. Now that changes around the world. For instance, where I'm from in Australia, you can see it year round, but it just changes the angle of it is. The app that I use is PhotoPills. I go out and I scout the location. I, get, I use the AR setting and kind of plan out my shots. I'll show you a couple of screenshots of shots that I've planned out and executed. So we've gone over the basics of the things you need, the camera, the tripod, the lens, the couple other things. Where are you gonna go shoot and things to think about when you're gonna shoot? Let's get out in the field and go take some photos of the night sky, shall we? So we've made it to our location. Now, the first thing you wanna do is compose your shot. Now, the best way to do this is to bump your ISO right up to its absolute maximum and take a couple long exposures with like one to two seconds so that you can actually just adjust and create a composition without doing 20 and 30 second exposures because that's just gonna take a long, long time to actually get what you want. So what I'm gonna do is bump my ISO all the way up. I'm gonna bring my exposure down to about two and a half. So I'm not worried about the quality of these shots, I'm just trying to figure out the actual frame that I'm gonna get. Now once that I've found something that I'm happy with, then we're gonna tweak the settings so they're absolutely perfect, and then we can work on actually creating the image that we came here to do. So first things first, I'm gonna focus on infinity, and then I'm gonna open up the screen and zoom right in and manual focus on one of the stars because infinity isn't quite infinity when it's shooting the stars. What we're gonna do, we're gonna focus on one of these stars and make it an absolute pinprick, so it's tack sharp. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pick the right shutter speed so that the stars don't move a little bit while we're shooting. Now, there is a rule with astrophotography that is, it's called the 500 rule. Now you take 500 and you divide it by your focal length. So dividing 500 by 16 will roughly be 20 to 25 seconds. If you're shooting at 20 mil, you'd be looking at 20 to 15 seconds, so those stars are still tack sharp. 
So I've got 25 seconds, f2.8, so the aperture is wide as possible to let as much light in, and then the ISO, the sensitivity of the, the sensor at 6400. After that, I'm gonna adjust the Kelvin, which is the temperature. So the kind of standard for astrophotography is about 4000. If you want it cooler, go lower, it's like 37. If you want it a bit warmer, bump it up. You can always adjust this in post. So you've got your composition dialed, your settings are perfect, and the focus is tack sharp. Now what you wanna do is just fire off that shot and just make sure that everything's perfect. So we're gonna take a test shot, and before you do that, you're gonna put the two second timer on so that the tripod is dead still. Because even that little touch can make it shake a little bit and just throw your image off. Okay, once you've done that, you wanna zoom right in and just make sure that those stars are perfectly sharp. If there's a little bit of a trail, you know you've gone too long in your exposure. If they're not tack sharp, but they're a little fuzzy, your focus is just off a little bit. You can also check the color and the composition just to make sure everything's absolutely perfect before we start stacking. Now stacking is the key to getting those incredible Milky Way shots that you see. The camera can do a lot, it can do so much, but a little tweak in Photoshop and say five to seven images changes everything. So what we're gonna do, conveniently this camera will take seven or eight shots consecutively after I've got a timer. So I'm gonna turn all of these lights off and we're gonna capture that image. So after I shot those images, I ended up staying out all night and shooting a bunch more astrophotography. And today we're gonna to run through quickly stacking. And at the end, I've got another link that will take you to like the color grading and the brushing and everything else you need to do to create that incredible astrophotography image. So now that you've got your five or six stacked images, we're going to open this up in Photoshop and align those stars because as you might have seen, the stars did move quite a lot considering it was only 30 second exposures. So we're gonna go in and micro adjust them and then we're gonna blend those layers together to eliminate all of the, the noise and everything that comes from the camera that you're using. Now, this is a bit of a kind of a fiddly process. There are plenty of options out there that you can purchase, um, but because we're just introducing to astrophotography. Let's go and show you the actual manual way to do it. Now, first thing we're gonna do, obviously import our, all our images into Lightroom, and then we're going to right click on those images and go edit it in, open as layers in Photoshop. So we've got our five layers. So what we're gonna do now is micro adjust the stars. Now, the easiest way to do that is to deselect all of the images on top, all of these ones here, and we're gonna reselect the layer above our base image. So this one at the bottom, this bottom layer is our base image that we're gonna work from. So second layer up, we're going up to change the blending mode, and we're gonna go down to difference. Now that will literally show you, conveniently enough, the difference in the two photos. And now the only thing that's moved is these stars. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right click and free transform and right click again and go to warp. Now we're just gonna slowly tinker away and move things around until everything goes black. Now if it's got once it's black it, sh it says that there's no difference in the movement so we're just gonna warp things until then. Something to note though we're not gonna worry about the foreground because we're gonna chop, chop that out and replace that because we've got such a foreground in this and it's not just the night sky, those things moving won't actually align with the stars perfectly with this, this processing method. So I'm just gonna tinker away until the night sky is as dark as I can get. That's looking good over this side. And now I'm gonna go over this side and try to do the same. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, if you're, sh if you're printing up massive, then I would spend hours doing this and make it absolutely perfect. But because this is only really gonna be seen on a screen of like this big or probably this big if you're posting it on social media, it's not really the biggest issue. And it's actually more just at this stage learning the actual process of stacking these images. So that's that one. Now I'm gonna move up to the image above it. 
bring that one up, change the mode to difference, and then I'm gonna remove the layer below it. Now you'll see the stars have moved a lot more now because it's it's moved, obviously, a minute later. So this one's gonna be a little bit more tricky. So we're gonna go right click, free transform, right click again, and warp. And then tinker away until we get a nice clean black sky. Right, so now that we've got all of the stars aligned, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make a copy of this bottom layer. So just go up and duplicate layer. I'm just gonna call that base image. I'm gonna throw that one on the bottom and kind of ignore it for now. And we're gonna work with the top layers here. So I'm gonna highlight all of these and then I'm gonna right click Go up to convert to smart object. After that, I'm going to go up to layer, all the way down to smart objects, over to stack mode, and then to mean. Now this is going to essentially average out all of the photos and eliminate the noise, the things that shouldn't be there. So because the stars are all as aligned as possible, those ones are going to be sharp, and then the foreground, the nose, like the trees and along the ridge line, that's actually going to be a bit blurry. That's why we copy the base layer, and then we're going to put that on top. So you've noticed around the tree line here, everything's a bit messy, but the stars themselves, we zoom right in, are pretty bloody sharp. And it's also removed all of the noise from the image. Right, so now that I've got my stacked image and my base image, I'm just going to go and remove this kind of area. So I'm going to hit a little mask tool, going to grab the brush and just adjust the hardness a little bit. And then we're just going to go and brush over and just erase parts of the stacked image that are out of focus along the tree line here so that it looks tack sharp along there as well all the way along the base here along the top of the mountain we could probably zoom in and be a bit more uh more methodical with that section we just want see where the the warping has kind of created a ghost-like effect for anything that wasn't the stars so that's what we're just going to get rid of now actually see the difference in this area as opposed to the tree so I might just be a little bit more delicate with that that section there and the tree line and there, there we're good to go now from there we have a perfectly stacked image that we can then reopen in Adobe Lightroom and apply our actual edits to um, there will be so much more information in this image and you'll be able to bring out more colors and more textures and more tones in the stars and just create a better image overall. Now it's stacking is a slightly more advanced section of astrophotography shooting. Like we could have just done the absolute basics, but you guys are smart enough to be able to tinker away and put a bit of effort in and get a real image like that. Yeah. Hope this was helpful guys. Uh, this is something I do on almost all of my astro photos. If you want to actually learn how to edit the Milky Way in Lightroom using brushes and different techniques there, I've got a link that will show up in the, the credits and it will take you to a previous editing tutorial that I did on editing the night sky. Uh, so if you've made it this far, which I hope you have, I appreciate you being here and I'll see you next week for another adventure. I think we're going to, I think we're going to Lake O'Hara. It's one of my favorite places in the world. So if you want to see that, I'd hit that subscribe button and uh, 
We'll see you then. All right.